Uh, now to more serious news, there are growing calls for more federal regulation after a one-year-old boy died of fentanyl poisoning at a Bronx daycare. Three other children were sent to the hospital. Two suspects are now facing murder and assault charges. Authorities say they found enough fentanyl in the facility to kill 500,000 people. So joining us now is Gregory Brender. He is the Chief Policy and Innovation Officer at the Daycare Council of New York. Really, really glad to have you here. Thanks so much um, for having so, me. So, you know, a lot of, this was a licensed daycare, right? Initially, when we heard the story, I thought, oh, it must be unlicensed. It wasn't. Um, so how regularly, you're looking side to side, it was licensed, right? It, it was. It licensed. was. Okay, okay. Yes, yes, make sure licensed. I got that yeah, back yeah, right. Yeah, it was. How regularly. They just passed an inspection. Okay. Um, how regularly do these places get inspected? Both daycare centers and home-based family child care programs are very regularly inspected um, by multiple agencies in both city and state government, mm -hmm. as well as often by other nonprofits. Um, child care is a highly regulated industry, and it needs to be. Mm -hmm. uh, people are, parents are trusting child care providers with their children, their most precious assets, and we know that there needs to be a strong and heavily regulated uh, system for parents to have something that they can trust. Yeah, So, but then you gotta wonder, how does a daycare like this slip through the cracks? Then what, what went wrong? We, what could go wrong? Yeah, we don't know what exactly went wrong in this situation, and I know that uh, city officials and others are working to get to the bottom of it, and we believe that there will be a, a swift and an accurate uh, prosecution of mm -hmm. what needs to happen there uh, in this situation. Um, but city and state officials here in New York are working hard regularly to make sure that child care centers and family-based child care homes are not just um, safe, but also developmentally appropriate, that mm -hmm. these are places where parents want to have their kids, that these are places that um, nurture and help them grow and help them learn during the years that are the most important years of brain development. So let's talk some specifics, Gregory. Uh, what are, so what qualifies as a daycare? Is a person, a, a couple that are watching, let's say three kids that are not their own, is that considered a daycare or is that just babysitting? And what steps does a, a, a traditional daycare need to go through to become operational and to function in New York City? There's multiple modalities of uh, early childhood in New York City. There are child care centers, which have a very rigorous process of inspections, both by the health department, the fire department, um, if, they're if they're part of the Department of Education's uh, publicly funded system, additional inspections, as well as applications to Department of Education. For home-based programs, there are, there are similar systems. They have to um, not only have their space inspected, but everyone who lives in the home, regardless of whether they're part of the operation of the child care program, needs to go through background checks. Hmm. Be checked, not Everybody just who the, lives in the home? Yes. Wow. Not just... Um, background checks for criminal background checks, but against um, the state's registry for child abuse and maltreatment. So then, uh, you know, in this case, we had somebody living in the facility, we're told, uh, who uh, may, may have been, it's alleged, may have mm -hmm. been producing fentanyl. So then I have to ask you, do things need to change? I, I don't know, is it is it up to the daycare provider to give you a list of people living in the home? Is it up to them to come forward with that information? It requires collaboration, really, both from providers and from government. Um, they both have an, a really essential role in ensuring safety. There's a lot of inspections, but there can't be inspections every time that, every day that there is, because there are thousands of early childhood programs. And mm -hmm. In fact, we need more early childhood programs, not less, because there are families who are desperately trying to find child care. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it really requires action on both the providers and government uh, to make sure uh, that something like this never happens again, and really not just that something like this never happens again, but that you're creating spaces that are nurturing and positive mm -hmm. for the kids to be in. But so if a provider does, says, okay, there's three people here, and mm -hmm. there's a fourth person, I mean, how do you know? That's, yeah, that's why there's It's a, up to the there, provider. That's where it's up to either reporting or, or the inspections. So uh, there are a lot of parents who are gonna be watching this and obviously this has become a big story. It's not mm -hmm. just a New York story, it's a national story now. And people are saying, wow, I, you know, I'm scared if I'm sending my kid, I have a seven month old who's in daycare right now. And of course my wife and I were like, well, let's listen to this story and see what the reporting is. But what are the statistics like in, for example, New York state? Uh, is this uncommon? I mean, what number of, what kind of um, injuries have we seen in New York over the last five years? Um, and has there been anything that's happened that has caused the state to become tighter with the restrictions? Uh, this, is, this is a very uncommon occurrence. Um, there are thousands of early childhood programs 
operating in homes, operating in child care centers every day. And a tragedy like this is, is not something that comes along uh, often. Um, but the, I think that there is an interest both in government and providers in making sure that every, every center and every home is a safe and, and positive place. And I, I know that the you know, early childhood providers everywhere are, are mourning with this family because mm. this is such a tragedy and this is not what um, early childhood providers are doing. What happens if you find a place that has violated some of the guidelines? It must be a difficult decision to choose to shut down a daycare because you know it's going to have a, a, a huge impact on the families that depend on it. So, but what happens when you find a place is repeatedly violating? Places have been uh, shut down due to uh, violations um, on any number of issues. Um, and they can also go into corrective action plans. There are supports out there to make sure that early childhood programs improve. And we need to, as a nation and as a city and a state, be investing in early childhood to make sure that we can ensure all programs are high quality, mm -hmm. um, not just uh, safe, but nurturing and educational. Mm -hmm. All right, Gregory Bender, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.